Hello again and welcome to the World Body Game Imperial Guard video and before we start today's video I would like to say a big thank you to Graham Lowe for sending in a picture of his first ever completed miniature and it happens to be one of the best miniatures you can get an Imperial Guardsman and if I'm not mistaken it looks like potentially a snap for Imperial Guardsman which I have to say I have a lot of those in my army they're an absolutely brilliant way of filling out your force if you're not aware of them it's a way of buying five guardsmen, just armed with lads guns, and they cost six pounds. But you can typically find them cheaper, and they just push together. They're made of two parts, the body, the legs, the head, and one arm. Uh, the left hand arm from the model's perspective, that is all one part. And then the lads gun and the right hand arm is just, just plugs in. And there's a socket in the center of the guy's chest. Uh, really easy to build, really easy to paint. You can paint the arm and then the guy and stick them together. Absolutely fantastic. So really good uh, models. Thank you, Graham, for sending in these pictures. Absolutely fantastic for your first model. I have to say it's way better than mine. Uh, than my, probably better than my current painting standards. So uh, you know, you've done an absolutely cracking job on that. And I also like that you've said only 199 more to go. Thank you. You are looking like you're going to be a pure infantry commander. Boom. I support that. If anyone else has got any cool pictures they want uh, to, me to use in my videos, please post them on my Facebook page. There will be a link down in the description below. Now, not only am I grateful for Graham for sending in a picture of his Garsman for me to use my videos, but it actually also was the inspiration for this video and prompted me to think about what uh, what is it like when you're getting into the guard for the first time? Okay, now, some of you will go, we've heard this one before, Morning Glory, every six months you end up doing a video about start collecting guard. That is true, and I do do that, and the reason I do it is because you know the method typically change every six months to a year and it's good to get that video uh, back up there again i acknowledge that sometimes i do tread over new ground over uh, familiar ground uh, but it's often to try and update it now i'm not going to be talking about tactics here crazy okay i'm going to be talk which this channel is a tactics channel you know at the very least it's primarily focused on tactics i'm going to talk about this from a hobby point of view I have been doing a lot of hobbying recently. I have been retreading the steps, reliving the steps of building your guard army from scratch and what it feels like to do that. And uh, and it's been it's been it's been eye opening. It's been great. It's like starting guard all over again. And because of that, I've been made this video on helping guard commanders tackle those first few early months when you're building your force together because it can be daunting more so than many other armies out there including horde armies collecting imperial guard can seem like an insurmountable task and there is a joke that no guard army is ever completed and that is true because the guard has such a wide variety of models um you, you don't know what to you don't know what to pick up you don't know what to build and then also when you do get all this stuff when you finally do just say god damn it i'll just just pick anything um then you've got to build it and you end up with this uh um this horde of gray plastic that you want to paint and uh that can be daunting and also it, you know it, it, can, it can be intimidating so today i'm going to be more less talking about the tactics and you should get this unit then this unit then this unit i've done that before and the, the staple advice i always give is when you when you're building to a thousand points Get Guardsmen and get Lehman Russes. Just do that. You know, when you build into a thousand points, for every 30 Guardsmen, you want a Lehman, well, for every 30 to 40 Guardsmen, you want to be buying uh, a Lehman Russ. For every, you know, you want to basically be having equivalent points of Lehman Russes and Guardsmen. That's the tactics advice. When you get to those points, after that, you've got a solid core. Go nuts. Buy what you want after that point. But, looking we're not going to talk about those tactics things now we're going to be talking about the hobbying side of things okay uh how do i how have i been able to sort of churn out 10 guys a week every week well uh, it's more sort of like a week every week and a half so how am i churning out 20 guys every three weeks how am i churning out 30 guys in a month um it's all about breaking your hobby down into manageable chunks it really really is and there are ways of doing that it's also about ways of um it's also about ways of making your painting as efficient as possible 
Now this, this video will be a little bit rambly because it's a bit of a softer video, but hopefully I'll get everything across that I want to say. So, firstly, I would, I would like I said, I would always, I would always recommend getting Lehman Russ, uh, Lehman Russes and Guardsmen to start with, but don't forget that you don't want to ever feel like what you're painting is a, is a chore and you don't really want to paint it and you feel like oh, I've just got to do it. Sometimes you do have to you know, push for the burn a little bit when you sort of you want to finish that squad off and you've just got to uh, get that last guy done or do that last layer of washes. Sure, that's a, you've got to sometimes push for the burn, but never feel like, oh God, here I am painting my 30th guardsman in a row. Jesus, I just, I just don't want to do this anymore. Or you must try and avoid that, guys, because if you don't, you will get painting burnout. And then what will happen is you'll have these fits and starts of painting where you will uh, paint a huge amount in one in a small period, and then typically you'll do this anyway in the honeymoon period of when you first got your you know your models together. You'll you'll paint this this huge amount in a short bit of time, and then you will get burnt out. Suddenly, it'll be like day and night. One day, you'll suddenly just go, I don't want to paint anymore. And then you won't paint for six months. Or maybe, you know, maybe it's like exaggeration. You won't paint for a month, two months. And then you'll do another week, two weeks. It's just, ah, and then you'll be rushing it. And then you'll go another, you know, three to six months, month, whatever. And yeah, you'll just see it's a vicious cycle. You're just doing these fits and starts, fits and starts. And you're just getting this feeling of burning out. And then subconsciously, whenever you do this, What's happening is you're just getting this feeling in the back of your head of well either I'm so I'm either I can't face painting something or when I am painting it I don't enjoy it. That is what you've got to try and avoid. And that's what I'm going to try and help you pass on some of my wisdom. And you, other people will have covered many of these bits before, but I will impart some wisdom onto you as well. There's plenty of places on the internet where you can find similar information to what I'm saying, but I'm going to try and do it from a guard perspective. Okay. So, what I would recommend is your guardsmen, you're going to have a lot of guardsmen. I mean, typically, you're going to have an absolute minimum of 60. Now, I don't like it when people only run 60 infantry, but your absolute minimum of 60, more than likely, you're going to have double that. That's what a typical guard army needs because you're not just going to get your 120 guardsmen and then that's it, you're done. You're going to also, you're going to get your 60 guardsmen, then you're done, or your 90 guardsmen, you're done. You're going to want to have different weapon loadouts, you're going to want a mixture of flamers and grenade launchers, you're going to have, you're going to want to have more special weapons than you actually need just because you want to be able to uh, ebb and flow with the meta. Um, and you want, you're going to want to try interesting things out, you know, taking the competitive side out of it. You're going to, one day you might fancy grenade launchers, the other day you might fancy flamers, that's fine. You're gonna have you're gonna want the models to do that, and you're gonna want different sergeant loadouts. Sometimes you want sergeants with large pistols and chainsaws, nice and cheap, standard. Sometimes you want plasma pistols, sometimes you want power weapons. So you're gonna have about 120 guys, and if you, you know, even if you're just paint, even if you're just collecting for fun because you want the cool different weapon options. Now, that's a lot of infantry you're gonna have to paint. And then you're also going to have quite a few characters. You know, you're going to have some company commanders, some platoon commanders, and some commissars and some psychers. Now, what I would recommend is, when it comes to painting your infantry, don't worry about painting them to the absolute best of your ability, okay? Honestly, when it comes to guard, the best guard armies out there that you regularly see are painted to a good tabletop standard okay that means they have two primary colors a few secondary like maybe two three secondary colors and then a couple of, maybe one or two fine detail ones but you won't you know you don't, you don't need more than like eight paints okay which sounds like a lot right but it's not you know for example if we look at the uh you know if you look at the color scheme that we've got here uh that graham's done you've got two primary colors You've got your tan, you've got your green, you've got your couple of secondary colours, you've got your black, you've got your silver, and then you've got some of your fine detail. You can see some some edge highlighting. Yeah, I, you know that's it. That's even pretty. That's another brown there, another lighter brown there. Bit of edge highlight, highlighting. There's at least a uh, one or two washes in there. That's two more paint, and he's got his basing material. That's eight roughly. Now, if you wanted to, you could add an. Oh, you don't forget the white on the uh, the white. 
on the uh, skull with wings. You could make that gold. I like mine to be gold just because I'm more of an iron guard. I like flashy, uh, flashy uniforms. That's it. You know, you're looking at uh, ten paints to paint, and that's all you need. And and if you paint, look, if this guardsman here, he is painted to a, a really, I think, a good standard. He's painted to a, a good standard for a guardsman. You see a lot worse guardsmen out there. You do, you really do. Um, all you need is a couple of primaries, a couple of secondaries, a couple of fine details, a couple of washes, and that's it. That's all you need, and a texture paint. Um, now, that is important because you don't want, why, why, am I, why am I saying that? Why am I telling you not to paint to the best of your ability? Because you, like, you're going to be painting a lot of these guys. So if you paint every single one to your best ability, it's going to take you forever to do that. And then you're going to get painting burnout because you're going to be there slogging away, slogging away. And then you're like, I've been working on this squad for a month and it's 10 guards, and it's only like 50 points. Jesus, how the hell? I'm never going to build up. And then inevitably what you what a lot of guard players end up doing at that point is buying too many tanks to fill their ranks out. Because you've got to get a fine balance in the guard between tanks. If you want a, a nice, hybrid, good, solid army, you want to get a balance with the tanks of infantry. And you see a lot of people have just way too many vehicles. Because vehicles in the guard night take, take up a nice chunk of points. So you can take it sort of... You know, you're 10 vehicles, but you've only got 30 infantry, and then your vehicles end up getting trapped. So it's no good. So you're going to want to paint your infantry to a, a standard what, that you can churn them out. You can churn them out, but it feels good, because some of you are saying, well, won't you feel bad about just, you know, not painting your ability? No, not at all. This is what I find, is that when you complete a squad, you get a really good feeling. That sense of completion is fantastic. Uh... And that's almost the feeling that you're going to want to be chasing. You know, you're going, to, you're going to want to be chasing that, yes, I've completed another squad. And the quicker you can do that, but without the model looking shit, because you've, it does that fine balance. If you've got a model which is only three colours, and maybe just dunked in Nolan Oil, uh, it'll probably look okay, but you'll still be looking at it like, God, I could have, I could have done a bit more on this. And then you'll, look at, you'll have an army like I did with my Mordian... Uh, 50th rifles, the first iteration of them, where they all just look like crap by after a few years. So you don't want to do that. You want to have, you don't want a scheme that's overcomplicated. You don't want a scheme that's not complicated enough. You just got to get a nice middle ground. And don't worry if you know, don't worry if uh, you know a little bit of the basing material ends up on the boots of the guy. That doesn't matter. Looks like he's trudging through mud. Great. Don't worry if uh, you know some of the wash, you know, the green wash spills onto some of the tans. It doesn't matter. No one will notice. Okay, because what are people going to see when you have your army all beautifully painted up uh, and completed? What people are going to see are, is the army as a whole, not the individual guys. And that's a really important thing to remember. Horde armies look good in, in big amounts with, of completed squads. Elite armies look great when each individual model is painted absolutely perfectly and you spend a week on one custody or a month on one custody. That's what they're meant to look like because you'll still have your army done in like six months. Guard look better when you've got a lovely horde that's painted to a good standard and it really, completed units do look better. That's, if that's one little bit of advice you take away, it's completed units look better. Okay. And uh, what I tend to find with my morning fitted rifle scheme is when I'm sort of halfway through every single squad, I'm halfway through, I'm thinking, this looks terrible, this scheme doesn't work, it doesn't work, I've had a few wobbles, and then it, at the end, I complete it, I put that final wash on, and I'm like, oh my god, this I, I love this new scheme, I really like it, and I've had, a, I've had so much positive feedback on it as well. So that's what I'd say to you as well, when you've completed a squad, it looks great. Now your characters, you are going to want to paint some models to the absolute best of your ability, and where I recommend you do that is on your characters. For example, last week I painted a 10 man squad of Morning Iron Guard, even filled in the bases and everything. This week, for Morning Mondays, I painted one Commissar. I just took my time, I watched some YouTube, watched some Netflix, I didn't rush it, you know, and I painted that Commissar to the best of my ability. And I took my time over it and I filled in all the little mistakes, and he's really clean and he looks great. I, so that's how you. That's where you get the balance on your 
on your characters. I would paint them to the best ability, take a week, two weeks on a single model. That's great. That's what they're there for. They're your heroes. On your rank and file, you know, don't worry about it. Just churn them out to a good tabletop standard. They'll look great in completed units. Now, when it comes to, when I say churn them out, what do I mean? Well, so we've talked about how you should, you know, manage your paint scheme, whatever that is. Let's talk about how you're actually going to paint the rank and file. Okay, because this is important in the guard. Okay. You're going to want to do batch painting. It will make things much quicker and you won't get that feeling of, uh, oh God, I've got to paint another guy. You see, if you paint one guy at once, what you obviously, of course, you're going to paint one guy at once when you're working your scheme out and you're just you're practicing. That's fine, of course. We're talking, you know, maybe a couple of weeks down the line when you've got the hang of this painting malarkey and you're, uh, you know, you're starting to get a bit more confident. You're going to want to start doing batch painting. So I'd say your first squad, paint them one at a time, no problem. Your second squad, you're going to want to do batch painting. And that's where you do all of one colour, then all of the second colour, and then you do this on all the members of the squad, or all the members of the chunk of guys that you're doing. Okay, so if you're doing a 10-man squad, we're using Graham's example, you would paint all of the Castellan green first, then you would paint all of the uh, tan, I think that's uh, Zandri Dust, is it? And then you would paint all of the Chaos Black or Abaddon Black, whatever it's called these days, then all the Flesh Tone, then all the Silver, and then you'd give it a wash. And that, you do them all. So you do 10 lots of green, 10 lots of tan. Now, the reason you do that is because when you complete the unit, when you do that last colour, you're not having to start again to get the squad finished. You've just, you're done. You've completed it. Bam, and it's weird. It all comes together really quickly. And you'll find that the couple of primary colours, you're like, oh, I'm smashing it. I get the couple of primary colours done uh, in the first uh, first couple of days. And then you start taking your time on the fine detail, just as you're about to get burned out on that fine detail, suddenly the squad's finished. Really, really helps. Really helps. Now, I personally tend to paint in my guides in batches of 10. Okay, because I like to get a whole squad done. Uh, I do appreciate not everyone likes to do that and painting 10 lots of green can get maddening. Uh, I would recommend a minimum or I'd recommend about five. I'd recommend about five. Now what's it really interesting is it is uh, I've seen if I was to do if you do if you're going to do that, that way you do you do two batches of five and you've got a 10 man squad and I would do it where you've got four riflemen and a sergeant and then four riflemen and like a special weapon if you're building a box of 10 guardsmen because that way you do your four riflemen uh, and then you get to treat yourself with maybe you know just painting that uh, that sergeant in a little bit more detail or painting that special weapon guy in a little bit more detail you get to do that guy at the end or sort of halfway through to keep you going all these little tips and tricks you'll find really helpful um so yeah you want to be doing batch painting uh, not only because it will speed things up, but it will also give you that sense of completion. Now, I have seen some, uh, it, it to be argued that if you want to, you could paint, if you've got the time, paint two guys completely in an evening. So what happens is you paint all the green on one guy. Then when, whilst he's drying, you paint all the green on the second guy. And then when, by the time you've done that, you'll go back to the, to the first guy again, and the paint will be dry and you paint blah 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 and you paint the second colour you can do that that can be very that if you've got the time where you can sit down every evening consistently and just spend two to three hours well not even that long maybe an hour to two hours to just smash out a pair of guardsmen that's fine you can do that but I know there's a lot of people out there myself who just don't have that luxury you know, you've got you've got other you've got hobbies you've got friends maybe you've got family you've got kids maybe you only get that one day off where you just get to sit and just relax and paint you know or you get a couple of minutes here and there um i tend to find that i tend to have, have a lot going on so i like doing the whole all one color thing because then i get all my color done and it's like boom i'm done for the evening right i can do what i want now and you, you're done and if you've got what i so that that's what i would that's my recommendation. There's a couple of other little tips and tricks I want to throw out there. Um, how I have tend to organize my painting is I do little and often 
throughout the week. So every night I'll do an hour, maybe maybe two hours, typically like an hour, hour and a half. Um, and then that will get me two thirds of the way through the squad. So that'll get all the green done. That'll get all the blue done. That'll get all the brown done, all the silver done. And then I tend to have Friday off because I like to do my gaming on my Friday. It gives me a rest from the painting every evening. And then I'm about halfway through then. And then on the Saturday or Sunday, one day of the weekend, I will just have a painting, a mostly painting day, where I'll just smash out the rest of the squad. Smash it out. I'll sit there and I'll just paint for like four hours. Just spend the whole morning just painting. I'll still be in my PJs, won't have even have showered, might have my dressing gown on, and I'll just be painting. I'll just get that done for two to three hours and then, right, it's time for lunch. That's my routine. That works for me, guys. What I'm trying to say is, I'm using this as an example, maybe going a bit specific, but what I'm trying to say is, is plan your time a little bit. It doesn't have to be an exact schedule. It doesn't have to be from 6.30 to 6.31, I will paint this guardsman's helmet. From 6.31 to 6.32, I will then watch Netflix. From 6.32, yeah, it doesn't have to be like that. As much as the commissar would recommend it, it doesn't have to be like that. Just roughly plan it out. The point is little and often, with a big burst at the end, a sprint finish, I tend to find that works really, really well for me. Now, the last thing I want to say is a really good way of kind of like cheating, which sounds crazy, right? But there's a way of sort of cheating on how to paint quickly, and that is to be really clever with the base color that you choose, the base coat. Okay. You see, Games Workshop, and there's other uh, Faction, uh, paint factions, other companies out there that do spray cans, or if you've got an airbrush. But and we're just talking about. I don't. I don't use an airbrush, and I've been painting for fifteen years. It's not a mark of pride. I just. I just like painting with brushes. Um, I tend to pick. If you look at the. If you look at my armies, I tend to look at what Games Workshop has as a as a as a spray as a, in a spray can as a base coat. Okay, I look at that and I go, could I? Paint an army around that colour scheme. So, for example, my Steel Legion, a Zandri Dust. My Black Templars are obviously a bad and black. My World Eaters are um, Fist and Red. My Jean Steel Occult are either spray painted in a bad and black or they're spray painted in Mechanicus Grey. Vehicles, for example, in Mechanicus Grey. Infantry were typically sprayed in a bad and black. Point is, is I chose a spray, which basically meant that one of my primary colours got done for me. Now you do have you can't just do the spray because the spray doesn't get everywhere, but the spray does essentially just do a layer of paint for you, and uh, it is great. And you do want to base coat your models, guys. You do definitely want to base coat them. Okay, my black templates, for example, it's spray can black, and then it's fine detail, and I'm good to go. That's all it is. You know, my black templates got a hundred marines painted up in like six months. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's more than 10 marines a month. And that's for... And plus I got my Ironclad painted, all my characters painted, my uh, Lamida Crusader painted. I got loads of stuff painted up. So there you go. You, that, was, that was my marine, whole marine army. So there you go. That would be some, some probably the last tip I would give. But the point is, is that, and it, the thing, thing is, if you ever feel like you're getting burned out, just take... A day, you know, if you're paying three days straight, take a day off, come back to it the next day. Take all I just take an evening off, that's all. But the, the, the maximum I would give for your painting guard is little and often. It's always better, always better if you can to even if it's just 15 minutes, even if it's just I'm gonna get I'm gonna watch one episode of whatever is on you know Netflix that's like 20 minutes long, you know. Rick and Morty, always sunny in Philadelphia, peep show, something like that. Some quick 20 minute, you know, throwaway comedy I like to watch. I tend to find that's really good. I know some people like to watch like uh, anime or something out there. But um, quick 20 minute program and I'll just get whatever I can get done in one episode. That's it. My actual uh, preferred program for watching, and I recommend this to anyone out there, is Stargate and Paint. Me and my brother have a tradition of Stargate and Paint. Uh, because there's so many Stargate episodes. There's like hundreds. They did like 10 seasons with 20 episodes per season. And that's just SG-1. 
Then you've got our Stargate Atlantis, Stargate Universe, that we didn't really talk about the last one. And then there's like five films. Stargate and Paint. You don't even, uh, nearly every episode, they're, they're very loosely interconnected. It's great. And they're an hour long, and you just get what you can do in an hour. Right, I've done my hours painting now. I painted like a couple of guys. Job done. So there you go, guys. That's that is that last bit might seem like a bit of a trivial last end of comment thing. It's totally, it's not. Really, it is really important to have something that you can listen to whilst you're painting. And uh, I, I my, like I said, my go-to is Stargate and paint. I'm working my way through uh, Stargate SG One again, as you know, as we speak. It's so, I just, it, it just found it very good. So that would be my recommendations. And I hope that this this video has been useful. It's a bit chill, a bit laid back, but I'm not just this this and I hate doing this, but this is what this is what works for me. It might not necessarily work for you, of course, everyone's different. But this is what works for me. It's what helps me get into the groove of painting. And I've been painting horde. I've I only have horde armies. I only have horde armies. I have guard. I have Chaos, and you might think, oh, Chaos on a Horde Army. When you've got 60 Corn Berserkers, plus about 60 Bolter Marines as well, Bolter, uh, Bolter uh, Chaos guys, you've got a Horde Chaos Army. I've got Black I've got black Templars, Black Tide, 100 Marines, plus 110 Marines. You know, I've got Gene Silla Cult. I've got three Guard Armies. You know, I have been collecting Horde pretty much forever. I only do Horde. I can't do Elite Army, so... Uh, this this is it. this painting techniques these are born out of bloody struggle of painting for many many years so that's that's the only credentials i have i'm not a professional painter but this is why i help this is what helps me get my horde armies churned out so I hope you guys have enjoyed this video if you've got any techniques share them down below especially for those newer players out there that are wanting to know how to uh Get their guard armies painted to a good standard so they can start rolling some dice with them. Because we all know that painted models play better. Thank you for watching and of course I'll see you guys next time.